in the UK. Uh, I am also current chair of the Biodiversity Heritage Library Executive Committee, uh, and it's actually BHL and sustainability uh, that I'm here to talk to you about today. Um, and my talk will very much pick up on some of the themes that have already been touched on as part of the earlier talks. So uh, excellent. I think we're there. Great. Um, so uh, we can go next slide, please. Okay, um, to begin with, I hope I'm very much preaching to the converted here um, and that many of you are already aware of BHL or are active BHL users. Uh, but just in case not, um, just to remind everyone what BHL is all about. Uh, we are the Biodiversity Heritage Library and are an open access digital library for biodiversity, literature and archives. We are a consortium of natural history national and botanical collections who are working together to digitize our collections and make them freely available at biodiversitylibrary.org. Uh, the majority of our collections are out of copyright. However, we also include a large proportion of content that's in copyright, thanks to various agreements with a number of publishers, which I will touch on again in a moment. Uh, next slide, please. And we've been doing this for more than 17 years now. Uh, and throughout that time, we have continued to have the same shared vision of inspiring discovery through free access to biodiversity knowledge. And our collection includes literature right from the 15th through till the 21st centuries. Throughout that time, our overall mission has remained the same, to improve research methodology by collaboratively making biodiversity literature openly available to the world as part of a global biodiversity community. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, some statistics for you. We have now have more than 61 million pages online uh, with around 1.5 million annual users. We have 43 partners in the consortium with more than 100 global contributors. And as I said about the in-copyright content earlier on, uh, as a result of agreements with more than 372 licenses, uh, we have more than 800 in copyright titles included within BHL. And throughout the period of BHL's operation, uh, there has been a total of more than 4.3 million US dollars raised in external grants towards BHL operations. Uh, next slide, please. So BHL very much remains a, a key component of the core infrastructure for biodiversity research. And yet there is significant untapped potential for the enriching of other data sets, for linking literature in the BHL to associated extended specimen data. But our BHL data itself needs to be unlocked for this to happen. Uh, the, there's always some, already some work taking place on this front by retrospectively assigning the digital object identifiers to historical content to make it more discoverable and trackable. But there is much more still to be done to facilitate this transition from a digital library to BHL becoming more of a big data repository. We know that there is work around standardization, normalization, and also enriching the data that could take several lifetimes of manual labor, and that the only way to actually achieve what's required would be through computational work with the data. But we need additional support to be able to achieve this and to make the connections across various platforms so that we can achieve that idea of an extended specimen. Uh, next slide, please. One of the key services within BHL, uh, which many of you are probably aware of, is the taxonomic name finding, which is facilitated by tools developed by Global Names Architecture. The entire BHL corpus is now indexed in less than a day, thanks to some very efficient programming. And BHL has indexed more than 230 million instances of taxonomic names, allowing researchers to locate publications about specific taxa. We're very grateful to Dimitri Mazarin and Jeff Oa for continuing this work and uh, providing these tools. Uh, next slide, please. So in terms of BHL funding, uh, you can see here there's been quite a variety of different funding sources over the years, uh, and this lists the actual kind of how the funding was raised across the various institutions involved. But you will also notice from the visualization on the right how those initial spikes in grant funding that got us started and moving have not been matched. And more recently, it's been challenging to get anywhere near the level of those. 
Uh, in total, as I said earlier, we have had more than $14.7 million in funding, which is excellent. But there is still much work to be done. Uh, next slide, please. The original grant for BHL was, uh, came from the MacArthur Foundation as part of the Encyclopedia of Life project. Uh, and there has been a number of additional grants beyond this, which have facilitated BHL going global and expanding access to the collection. There has, in 2007, there was a move to Smithsonian for funding a number of key BHL positions. In 2007, Smithsonian agreed to adopt uh, administ administrative responsibility for the running of BHL. And at this point, they created a program director position and also a collection manager. Since then, Smithsonian have additionally supported a program manager and uh, also a data manager more recently. In 2011, as we came to the end of the original MacArthur funding, it became necessary to introduce a revised governance structure that created a steering committee consisting of BHL members paying annual, annual membership dues of 10,000 US dollars. In fact, now uh, there are two categories of membership, one at 10,000 and the other at $1,000. But uh, throughout this period, those fees have not changed. Uh, next slide, please. And so it's important to consider how we can make BHL more sustainable going forward. And this rather nice cartoon on the right from uh, XKCD gives a really nice illustration of the situation, not just for BHL, but for um, so many biodiversity informatics projects, I would say. And it is that point of some of them being maintained on goodwill or supporting mechanisms and a very fragile technical ecosystem overall. Uh, next slide, please. So much of core biodiversity infrastructure is like that cartoon, resting on fragile territory. And it's important to consider the wider picture in terms of sustainability. It's a nice tweet here at the bottom from Professor Rod Page at University of Glasgow, who mentions our seeming inability to support basic infrastructure. Uh, next slide, please. We all know that access to biodiversity information is imperative and how key that is to facilitating ongoing work. But is that recognized in terms of funding or the support that is required to maintain these resources going forward? Uh, next slide, please. It's rather a nice example from Rothschild's avifauna of Lausanne and the neighboring islands. Reminds me of the, the different uh, biodiversity resources that we have uh, with BHL being a key example. Next slide, please. What would happen if one of those resources were to go extinct, were it to be either the supporting tools behind the uh, resources such as BHL or one of the others? And what is the interrelation between all these different resources and how they are linked and supporting each other? Uh, next slide, please. It wouldn't take much, as I think we are all aware, for many of them to run into a real issue in terms of sustainability, and that could be a problem. I know just from experience at Q, a number of our scientists accept BHL as something that is always there. It's core to their activity. They require it all the time. They cannot imagine it not being there. So that is an issue because I don't think there is any recognition for the fragility of the infrastructure behind. Uh, next slide, please. And obviously, we would want to avoid this situation. Next slide, please. So what do we need to do in BHL? How do we change and grow from here? How do we morph into that butterfly on the right? Well, we can continue to work with the entire BHL community to ensure our sustainability. Obviously, we have a great partnership amongst the consortium, more than 40, 43 partners who are passionate about BHL um, and who are incredibly having huge buy-in for the resource overall and the initiative these can be, they are already champions within their organizations, but uh, there's probably more they can do to, again, support the process going forward and to help us um, build on the sustainability for the resource. We can look at options for saving the bits and bytes of BHL data in other open environments, a kind of digital seed bank, somewhere where we could reassemble the data if we needed to, were the worst to happen. And what are the untapped spaces where BHL has not yet gone and where the data may enrich and survive? 
for example, collections management systems. Are we, you know, are we there? We're probably not in many cases. And we could be. We could be in collections management. We could be in digital asset management systems within organizations. Uh, next slide, please. So um, this is your opportunity to take part um, and a call to action from us, really. Um, there's several, well, a large number of questions we need to answer going forward. And here's three just to start your thinking. Is there a more diversified funding model that we could adopt for BHL? How might we encourage more institutional participation? And how can we expand integration of BHL data into the biodiversity research infrastructures? In 2026, BHL will turn 20. It will be the 20th anniversary. And as part of this approaching, the Smithsonian Libraries and Archives have now agreed that they will engage an external consultant to conduct a strategic assessment of BHL operations overall to review the governance, overall operation, and funding models that currently exist for BHL and how this might work going forward. For this assessment, we will obviously be seeking feedback from the entire uh, BHL community and also BHL stakeholders across the sector. And so if you would like to be involved, please either use the QR code or follow the link on the slide um, and send us your details. We will very much be in touch. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, so that's all from me today. I just want to thank you all for listening and say a huge thank you also to my co-authors uh, for all their invaluable contributions to this presentation. Thank you. Um, thanks for that. I think we'll have uh, Vince Smith come up and speak about the Impossible Library. Um,